Welcome back to another Power BI tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can pass slicer selections into SQL queries. This is something that I haven't been able to find out how to do online, so it's a really awesome trick that coupled with direct query is going to allow you to bring back new data every time you change a slicer selection. So in this example right here, I have the drill down player that's going to step through my data acting as a slicer, and it's going to send a new query. Um, uh, new query to the database to actually return back a different result set as you'll see in the changing dates. So if I, if I press play, you'll see that the dates are actually changing and it's an actual animated moving x-axis. In reality, my data is just changing and it's using direct query to query the table every time the slicer changes. So um, that's what's making it look animated. It's actually, this is the entire data set right here, just changing every time that there is a filter change. So I'm gonna walk you through how you can set this up on your own. So basically the first piece of the puzzle here is using this drill down player. This drill down player is stepping through the entire, um, the entire set of dates. And every time that slicer selection changes, it comes over to the R visual, which this R visual is taking in that date um, as its value. So that date is being passed in as data set. And it is using a library called RODBC to write SQL code. And the SQL code is dropping our table and then creating a new table using this date that's being passed in. And finally, this line chart right here is connected via direct query to that table that we're dropping and then recreating. So every time that slicer changes, um, the R script creates a new table and this direct query queries that new table, which uh, simulates an animated effect by, uh, since the data is changing constantly, it's constantly gonna be changing its x-axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can set this up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop our table, because originally we will not have that table created, and I'm going to open up a new Power BI uh, desktop. So once that opens, I am going to come over to SSMS again, and I am going to create a new table. And just to show you that this table isn't available, you can see that my table called Power BI is not a valid object. So let's go ahead and create a new table. I'm just going to select star into our new table, I'm gonna call it Power BI, from Fact Internet Sales of the AdventureWorks DW2012 database. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of data, just nine, uh, 10 days worth. So if I click um, F5 to run it, so it inserted 437 rows into our new Power BI table. So let's go ahead and select it just to make sure. And we see 437 rows. So let's jump over to um, Power BI and let's go to Git Data and SQL Server. And we're gonna use Direct Query. And let's type in our um, information here. Uh, my server is BI SQL Express and my database is AdventureWorks DW 2012. So if we go ahead and click OK, we're going to set up the direct query to use that new Power BI table. So go ahead and click the checkbox and load. So that's going to bring our new Power BI table into scope here. And once that loads, we're going to create a nice line chart. And let's bring in sales amount into the values and order date into the axis and that looks good. Um, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna uh, want to import the drill down player. Uh, that is a custom visual that I will include the download link um, in the description. So I already have a download, so I'm going to import from file, drill down player, and then I'm going to throw this on the left side. It may be tempting just to throw an order date over here, but we don't actually want that to happen. If we use order date in this drill down player, it's going to select order date and then only show us that day's worth of data in our visual over here. So we actually want a new query that's gonna give us all of the distinct order dates from this table, but it's going to be unrelated. It's not gonna have a relationship to our um, Power BI table. So let's go ahead and get data one more time. Go to SQL Server and same as last time, BI SQL Express. AdventureWorks DW2012. Uh, we are going to use direct query as well. And we're just gonna have a timeout. We're gonna use a little bit of SQL here. We're going to select um, distinct. And we're gonna do that from Power BI. 
we want to select the distinct order date. Uh, select the distinct order date. Um, and just to save you a little headache here, we're actually going to want to do one more thing to it. We're going to want to cast this as a date because it'll show up as date time and we only want the date portion. And on top of that, we want to cast that as text because when we pass this into an R visual, we need it to pass in as text. So let's cast this as varchar for text and we'll give it 20 characters worth of space. So if we close off the parentheses, and I'm going to name this as casted date. So that works, we're just taking the distinct order date from our Power BI table, and we're casting it as a date and then casting that as a text. So once we go ahead and click OK, we're gonna have our next table. So these are all of the dates here, um, the distinct dates. So let's go ahead and click load, and we'll see that show up on the right side from query one. I'm gonna rename this uh, to dates. Awesome. And I am going to pull this into our drill down player. So uh, first thing I'm going to do on while I'm selecting the drill down player is go to formatting, animation options, and change this to one second between um, filters. So it goes a little bit quicker. So you can see that this uh, date is stepping through one row at a time every second. So that's really cool. So really where all the work here is going to be done is in this R visual. Since R visuals run every time a slicer changes, it makes it absolutely perfect. So let's go ahead and click on the R visual. It'll ask you if you want to enable it. Let's go ahead and enable it. And it's showing up down here. So um, we can drag a field in here. And since we're using uh, casted date as our filter, we're going to drag that into our values well for the R visual and by default your value that's passed in is going to be put in a data set. Um, so it's basically a data frame of the values you pass in. So ours is data set. Um, and let's jump over to RStudio so I can show you how this script is going to work. So if I come over to RStudio, this is our entire script that we are gonna to need to run in our R visual. First thing you need to know is we are requiring RODBC. So in order to get RODBC, you need to type in install.packages. And in quotes, you're typing in RODBC. Um, so once that downloads, it's going to allow you to use this RODB, uh, RODBC package, which gives you these functions to allow you to write SQL code and interact with your database from R, which is awesome. So stepping through here, once we require it, we are going to set a uh, variable equal to calling the function ODBC driver connect. This basically sets up your connection. So we're gonna say it's a SQL server since I'm using a SQL server. Um, and our server name is BI SQL Express. My database is AdventureWorks DW2012. And the final parameter is secure connection equals true. That uses Windows authentication when it's trying to connect to the database. Um, I'm using this X right here as just a variable because we are going to actually use string interpolation to throw in this variable into our SQL query, but we'll get to that in a second. So using the SQL query function right here from RODBC, it allows you to use your connection and then interact with your database through normal SQL um, syntax. So the first thing we actually want to do every time a filter changes is drop our table. And the reason we want to drop our table is because then we want to repopulate our table with some logic based on the date that we're passing in. So once we drop our table, we are no longer going to have that table anymore. So we can select new data into it and use that in our visuals. So um, just as an example here, let's go ahead and go back to um, let's go back to SQL Server. And once we select this, we can see that we are pulling data from January 1st, um, 2013. If we come to R and we set this equal to January 1st, say 2012, and we run this query, this part of the query is going to select star into Power BI from Factor Internet Sales, where order date is between this 1 1 2012 date and one month ahead of that. This is what this query will do. So if we run that, it'll complete down here. And if we go back to um, SSMS and we run this query again, we can now see that our first date is January 1st, 2012, which is awesome. So just stepping through that again, we are actually recreating the Power BI table, but selecting 
Um, we're filtering our factor net sales table down to just order dates between uh, whatever variable we have here, which will be our filter um, when we use it in Power BI, and one month after that filter. Uh, also note that you have to do a lot of um, kind of string interpolation here. I'm using the paste zero function to basically take this text string, select all the way to between, and then paste in uh, our variable, paste in some more quotes, and then paste in the rest of it along with our variable and more quotes. It's actually really tedious to get this working because you have to have all your quotes in the correct place. But if you use your, um, if you use syntax just like this, it will work. But it might take a lot of time trying to figure out how to do it. So once we have this query here, we will go ahead and copy it. And we'll come back to Power BI. And in our code down here, we'll go ahead and paste it. Let's make sure we have everything. Um, Okay, and one thing that you need to note for our visuals is you need to return um, you need to return a plot. So that's why I have these commented out here. The last thing we're gonna do is actually show a plot. So if we say plot one one, it's just gonna show a plot of one on the X, one on the Y. So it's gonna do the exact same thing. And another tip here is if you throw in title and we make the subtitle equal to X, it's basically gonna show you your filter selection because a lot of times it's hard to figure out how to see what value you're passing through. This is a good way to see the text value that you're passing through to this R visual. Um, and last thing, we have X hard coded to 1-1-2012. We're actually gonna need to use uh, data set one comma one. And the reason we're doing that is because data set is being passed in to our R visual. And since it's a data frame, we want the first row and the first column, which will give us our actual um, value. Actually, let me bring this a little smaller and bring this up so we can see it. So if we go ahead and click uh, run here, it's gonna show us um, just our value, our random plot of one, one. But you see the subtitle down here? That's the actual date that we have that's being passed into this R visual. And that brings me to another point. After we actually paste in our R script, always make sure to refresh. I'm not sure why this is the case, but you have to refresh to get the latest um, kind of R script to work here. So let's go ahead and play one more time um, just to show you that you will now get your new functionality like we want. I want to add one more thing that makes it a little bit better is if we change our formatting and go to X axis and make this categorical, we can actually see these values change a little bit better. And coming to Power BI and going to order date and then changing the modeling to just a, a date without the time, I think that would look better. You get values like this and making it a little bit bigger so everyone can see. And we'll click refresh one more time and then go ahead and cycle through the data one more time. And you get our functionality that we want with a dynamic x-axis. So this is a really interesting idea to be able to continually query your database that you're continually dropping and recreating with every changing slicer selection. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next Power BI video.